You ready, folks? We are gonna dive right in. Well, oh, lost memories of self, a forgotten murder case, a dead guy and a detective joined forces to find out the truth behind them both. Because apparently our dead guy isn't actually a detective that we know of. There's a detective. And if, to be fair, if Sissel, if his name is in fact Sissel, if Sissel was a detective, then most likely the other detectives would know that he was a detective and they don't seem to. And they've literally seen his dead body. So it seems very unlikely that he is actually a detective. But I have a detective on my team, so it counts. The Phantom Detective sub subtitle is exclusive to the US version? Okay, well. Maybe Ghost Trick doesn't sound as weird as a title in Japanese. I don't know. That's interesting. The detective assigned the dead guy a task to sneak into the prison and find out a certain prisoner's schedule for tomorrow. What should I care? I don't have a schedule for tomorrow. That's how I'm feeling about it at the moment. Now, worth pointing out here is that his, um, I don't have a schedule for tomorrow is like, I don't, it's, it's not like I don't care because I don't care about things. It's, I'm not going to have a tomorrow. He is here until the morning light, basically. He has all night and then he is gone. It sounds like he's kind of trying to reckon with that. Oh! I'm still in this very weird place. Oh, I can overhear somebody talking. Okay. Wait, but how? Hold on. I want to go down and talk, talk. Can I not? I thought there was a thing I could overhear. Okay, well. There was some, I thought there was something I could overhear that it showed over here. I guess maybe not. I guess maybe that was registering what's up there. Or did I miss, no? Oh, uh, DJ Wall. there is actually a way to do live captions for Twitch. And I tried to activate it and I don't think it worked right. Um, but I will, try again if you'd like I don't know that it's a browser extension I think it's a thing on my end but if there is a browser extension on your end that would be easier oh was it one of my thought bubbles but I can't go anywhere else oh well other than up here oh no it's okay accessibility is a thing that matters um, I do try to help uh, make things work for folks. I just, I, I thought I saw, I'm sorry, I thought I saw a text bubble. And I don't see it. I must have missed it. Darn. Well, anyway, as was discussed, um, we are playing not a detective, but we are playing with a detective. We have a phantom and we have a detective and they're teaming up to fight crime, <laughs> solve crimes anyway, um, or something like that anyway. <laughs> All right, so I have to get into the telephone, but I can oh, I can eavesdrop on what these guys are saying, I think. I thought I could. Can I not? Did I miss it? Was it a timing thing? You saw it, didn't you? Did I do something wrong? I must have done something wrong. 
was how that worked. I'm gonna load, actually. How do I do that? Do you mind if I try that again? I just, I don't want to miss things. Okay, we're gonna try this. All right, so we already had this. I already narrated this, so I'm not gonna narrate this. I'm gonna mash some buttons. Can you hear the buttons mashing? Is that getting picked up? My controller buttoning. Well, that's how you know that I'm really, it, it's an immersive experience. Okay. Ah, there we go. I wonder how that detective who keeps dying is doing. Hope she's still alive. I bet she's pretty pleased with herself, keeping so much of the Reaper's attention focused on her. That little lady is waiting for her at the chicken kitchen. After I take care of this assignment, I'd better head there too. See, that was totally worth loading for. Um. By the way, so my roommate has played this game. Uh, she's out right now, but I, I should probably keep an eye on it just in case she comes back. I'll close the door then. Um, no, my roommate had played this game before, um, and uh, so we were. I was talking about how many times Lynn has died, and I was like, "Oh, we'll see how many times she dies this time." And roommate, my roommate said. Well, if she's not bothered by it, then we shouldn't be bothered by it because it's her life. And I thought that was funny, so I had to share it with you. <coughs> anyway, Lynn is a weird weirdo. But a uh, likable weirdo, which I think is pretty much the whole cast here. See if we can see what they're saying here. All right, we can. I don't know why it went away before. Okay, hold on. It's all over. It's all over for me. Lynn, sweet, cute Lynn, who shines as bright as the sun, ran away on me. And then those detectives, matching bookends, blue and green, yelled at me. I'm sorry, he has to have that funny lol. Oh, forget about all that. Now you listen to me, kid. Yes, sir. Your bright as the sun Lynn probably doesn't even know you exist. Uh oh, Grandpa is going to give us some tough love here. <laughs> and those detectives will probably yell at you your whole life. Never mind fretting about every little setback. Enjoy your life. Get what you can out of it. Mister. Would you mind just leaving me alone? He's trying to give you good life advice, actually. That, that's pretty good advice. <laughs> really, all things considered. They do not care about me using my telekinesis power. Why don't I do this? They do not care. Gotta be annoying. Oh, I wanted to. Oh, hold well on. Well, I was trying to be annoying. <laughs> I failed. <sighs> I guess I have no choice but to progress the plot. Are you ready? Are you ready to progress the plot, my friends? Uniformed men's office. We could go. Oh, that's right. We're in a new chapter. We're going to go to all of the different places because we're in a new chapter. I think we'll do this. Thank you for reminding me of that. So first we'll go to the junkyard. Boom, 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 boom. It's so stylishly animated. 
non-progress comes first. That's right. Ah, welcome back. How is it going? Have you solved all of your mysteries? Can't you tell by my face? I did see your face, but I asked anyway. That's friendship. Smart alecky light fixture. The lady detective and I decided to join forces. She and I are connected somehow. I just know it. Oh, that's fine news. Oh, he's really excited. <laughs> Look at him wriggle happily. His light was flashing too. That's how excited he was. I like that as well. <laughs> if you're gonna have an animated lamp, that, that it's good to give it. It's good to give it means of expressing its emotions. Tonight, you and she both suffered misfortune, yet we both died. <laughs> That's one way of putting it, buddy. But if you combine her bad luck and yours, it makes great good fortune. Remember that. Two bad lucks makes a good luck? Hmm. I don't know. By my math, bad luck plus bad luck equals a whole lot of bad luck. You should check your figures. Your, your mental, your calculation figures. That's a very old fashioned thing to say, to describe your figures. You know, like I actually have to like mentally translate that to um, how I would more naturally say that. An emotional support lamp. Yes, he's a grandpa lamp. So that's actually some good, uh, good character definition for him. All right, the luxurious parlor. Let's see if there's anything going on here with these bad guys. This line doesn't seem to be working. Guess I can't go there right now. That's right. And Lynn's apartment is, should, is probably still offline. Yeah. A lampa. I, I, it's okay, Chrono. I, I, I approve. All right, let's see what's going on in the ladies' red apartment. Miss Rose. Sorry. Glamps. That's a good one. The passionate typing continues on. She wears her fingers away as she spins her tale of love. Good luck, Mama. She's a sharp-tongued little girl, but she still supports her mother's dreams. <laughs> I love that he's narrating. I think that's great. And please get out of that business as quickly as possible. Hmm, I guess not. <laughs> he's over here trying to narrate, but because he's not actually an omniscient narrator, he's mistaken. Yeah, I can't reach anywhere from here. Well, we're just gonna continue to go everywhere because we can. Get bits and pieces of their stories. Little tiny fragments of characterization that aren't essential but would be fun to figure out. Oh, buddy's still having a bad night. Hi, buddy. Even as I sit here, time is ticking away. I wonder what he's feeling right now. He? He? I bet he hates me! Ugh. Oh, if only I could blow up and scatter into a million pieces. That's awfully, awfully specific, my dude. Somebody is going to do that in this game. And it's going to be like, haha, isn't it funny? Because they actually could animate that. Maybe he ought to think of more peaceful images. I wonder who this he is. Sorry, buddy. We'll go to the park. See what our stakeout fella and his weird Tango Kokiri buddy are up to, if anything. The entrance to a nearly deserted, dimly lit park. The sad voice of a young man drifts over to me on the breeze. I have to use the restroom. But if I leave my post, I just know I'll miss something. 
come to think of it, that annoying leaflet guy disappeared when I used the restroom earlier. Darn it, it's almost time. Which will show up first? My mark or the end of my ability to hold out? So we've got bathroom humor, very good. Well done, game. Super office is where we came from. Maybe there's something else going on there. You never know. Let's find out. Oh, they left. Oh no. They're having feelings. You know, sometimes I get the feeling I just want to crawl into a hole. This guy has some problems. And just maybe this is the entrance to my true destiny. Go ahead. Here, I'll even push the close button for you. It doesn't look like I need to come back here for a while. Man. Oh, but they took the cart so I can't go there. Oh, I want the cart. How dare you take my cart. How am I going to eavesdrop on this... Poor, depressed mess of a man and his weird chicken grandpa who tried to give him some decent life advice, but they're, everyone in this, everyone in this game is weird. That's my observation. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> we'll go down here just, just cause it's probably not gonna be anything. And then we'll go where we're supposed to go. I don't hear anything. I guess nobody's here. The darkness and quiet are relaxing, but there's no sense in staying here. Okay, fine, 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 fine. Oh, wait, 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 wait. The mechanical murder machine in this room. It must have been set up by that old pigeon guy. But what in the world for? It's a good question, man. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so we've got Lamp Grandpa and, and I guess that's more Pigeon Grandpa, but still. You gonna yell at me for going to the chicken kitchen when I'm not supposed to? Sorry, Lynn, I promise I'll do what I'm supposed to do eventually. I don't see any customers declaring their love for chicken tonight. <laughs> Amazing. Wasn't there a commercial in the 90s that had the catchphrase where they would sing, I feel like chicken tonight, like chicken tonight? They had this, there was this like trend where like farmers or, well, farmers, I don't know actually if they were actually farmers, but like people who were, who made money with a particular food product would put out ads. Oh, I just assumed it was like the chicken farmers of America or something like that. Was it shake and bake? I ate a lot of shake and bake when I was a kid. My parents didn't really cook. <laughs> I've had to learn how to cook as an adult. Um, well, because there was the whole milk, it does a body good thing that was like, just the concept of drinking milk in the US. Like, we'll have a, a slogan about that. Um, so like, this was a thing. Anyone outside the US? I don't know if, um, oh, Chicken Tonight is a product. Okay, it's so not Shake and Bake. I mean, I would have believed Shake and Bake. I ate a lot of Shake and Bake. <laughs> oh man. I cooked a really good beef stew tonight, though. It turned out really well. So, that was satisfying. It's been really cold out. It's been like in the 20s. It's very exciting. Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. Even though I live in Canada, I'm sorry. I'm not... I haven't fully converted to Celsius. Last year, I gave up trying to learn. I should start again. Let's 
sorry, I have to groove. I got distracted. <laughs> I hear singing come from the kitchen. Do I get do I get to have a singing chef character? Oh my god. La la la. I love you right down to the marrow of your bones. And I actually like put in a singing voice. But your marrow is nothing compared to your glorious meat. La la la. He's not a bad singer. I guess Lynn isn't here yet. I have a job to do. I'd better get to that first. Well, that's still delightful. Now we have a sneak preview. Telephone book. Menu board. And I can ring a bell. You hear? You can hear him singing along? That's fantastic. I don't think he was doing that earlier, but I might not have noticed. All right. This time for real. Plot progression? <laughs> Sorry. I can't sit still. I have to like dance to this. It's so silly. Okay. Oh, look, these two guys are hanging out. So how are the preparations coming along? I think they're taking care of them right now. Yeah, man, I'm not looking forward to this. I'm sorry, I can't remember what voice I do from episode to episode. So you just, you get whatever grab bag voice I decide on in the moment. <laughs> there will be absolutely zero continuity among this entire playthrough. <laughs> it's fine. Thank, thank you, really Glass. That's okay, you're not here for me and my memory and my acting skills. That kind of surprises me coming from you. I didn't know you thought about such things. By the way, that was me being sarcastic, just in case you didn't catch that. <laughs> what? Two more hours, and then it's time. I guess we should get back to work. No, excuse me. I guess we should just get back to work. Work. This man has his house of cards and his bottles of wine and his wine glass. He's working very hard. Yeah, I guess you're right. I love how very different their, um, like, super exaggerated body language is. And they have different hair colors. The atmosphere sure seems tense. I guess I'll just get back to my work as well. I want you to go find out a certain prisoner's work schedule for tomorrow. Yes, the prisoners are given a different job detail every day. Each prisoner's schedule for the next day is written on a small blackboard in his cell. His prisoner number is D99. Or maybe it should be D99. What do we think? Should we, should we 99 or 99 it? What's our preference? D99, okay. All right, sounds like everybody agrees it's 99, except for Blue Glass. Sorry, Blue Glass, you got outvoted. Oh wait, Millie of the Valley is here voting with you, okay. <clears throat> It does seem that 99... No, Dick Bumpline, I misread, misread that. Oh. Oh, man. Oh, no. Does anybody know how to do a Twitch poll? <laughs> this is exactly the sort of useless thing that I I would do a, a poll for. Yes. Yes. Let's see. How do we do that? Does anybody remember how to do this? Okay, poll. All right, my friends, did you just receive 
notification that you can pull. Those of you who are watching this live, you can dial in. Tell us your true feelings. 99 or 99? <laughs> The, the, the current poll is just called How Should We Read It? Because I'm very good at setting these up. I am so proud of myself. I am a real streamer now, okay? Democracy, that's right. The voting is happening. Call now. Dial in. Those of you who are watching on YouTube, you can vote after the fact, but your votes will not be counted. I apologize. But I am not psychic. I cannot determine from the future what YouTube viewers are going to vote for. All right, 63%, 10 votes say 99. That means that it would have been what, 37%, some other number that I don't know. Poll ended. Okay, well, there you go. <clears throat> 99 is the official reading. <laughs> His prisoner number is D99. <laughs> Amazing. Well done. We collaborated. Aren't you proud? You got to influence something. 38 for the other because Twitch can do math. They're just trying to break percentages. That's fine. Math. It's hard. Oh. I need to actually go back to the game. I can't press my controller buttons on the poll window. <laughs> Alrighty then. How do I get to these cells? <laughs> I'd better try to get some information here first. These different memos I can let loose, or I can examine this monitor. The screen shows rows of tiny rooms. The rooms are really, really small, and you can see right into them from the outside. I suppose the open bars keeps the rooms airy, but I wouldn't want to live in one myself. Oh, I wonder where these little rooms are. This is him reading it. I need to remember, he's the narrator. Not Lauren. There is no Lauren narrator. There is only Sissel. <laughs> All right. <coughs> See what happens if we let loose this one. Hey, Bailey. Try pinning up your memos a little better next time. Let me see this thing. Inspection, prisoner C-74. Oh, it's almost time for that. I'd better prepare. Prisoner C-74, eh? What did that big whale do, anyway? You don't know about the Metro Police Department siege case? Metro who what? C-74 barricaded himself into the Metro Police Department and took siege of the place. It's exciting. He even pointed a huge flamethrower at the Chief Commissioner. A flamethrower. What? Oh, we just had a had a librarian follow. Hello, thank you, welcome. Why the heck did he do all that? That's what the detectives who surrounded him asked too. What are your demands? They asked. And the guy looked confused, thought about it for a while, and said. Bring me five servings of curry and rice on the double. Curry and rice? That's it? Unfortunately, no. After he was done eating, he torched the commissioner's office with the flamethrower. Torched it good. <laughs> I must commend, commend the man on his commitment to property damage. <laughs> The important documents and the commissioner's mustache were destroyed by the flames. Okay, something important was lost there that is going to be significant to this case, perhaps. Or it could be, but a red herring. 
I like curry. Not so much fire. I'm not a fan of fire. McPickle Breath is such a good name. I'm sorry, that's a really good name. <laughs> The mustache is the key to solving the case. What the heck did he do all that for? Because the curry was too spicy, he said. Huh? It was too spicy and I just lost it, he said. Seriously? The case sent shockwaves throughout the country. Except this dude who clearly did not pay any attention to like literally anything. I like spicy food. And I don't like arson, so I guess I'm not at risk of turning into this man. So there's that. It's always good to know. If you fell to villainy in a life of crime, what shape would that take and why? But I can rest, rest assured that prisoner C-74 is not a magic glimpse into my future. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man. I really like spicy food. Although I will say spicy food from sorry, we're going on a tangent here. I have like been so good. I've had so few tangents in this game. I have made such good progress in Ghost Trick. It's unprecedented. Um anyway. Different spicy spiciness or different different cuisines have different kinds of spice. And so being good at one kind of spice does not necessarily mean I accidentally pressed a button. <coughs> does not necessarily mean um, that you can handle all equal spice everywhere. Um, so like I can't have Thai spice very well um, because Thai spicy peppers just destroy me but I can have pretty spicy Indian food um, and pretty spicy Mexican food. So, so it really depends, really depends. But you will, not, you will not catch me putting ghost peppers on anything. That's a different level. I'm not that, I'm not that devoted. I don't know what the right word, I'm not that resilient. How's that? Look at me trying not to lose my voice this stream. Yes, actually, Toronto has a ton of Caribbean cuisine. It can be quite delicious. Oh, wasabi. I, yeah, I don't do very well with horseradish or, or mustards. Um, I do well with lots of, like, spices. And I do well with some peppers, but not others. I really like the flavor of a habanero. Um, but ha habanero is, like... Still counts as quite spicy for me so when you get into like the like higher level peppers just no yeah well no there there's a different wasabi and mustard are different spices but they're they're still a kind of being spicy so there was this there was a sushi place in dallas actually when i lived in dallas that my my ex really liked my ex who I, I was in a relationship with when I lived in Dallas um, that was three kinds of spice it had it had the horseradish spice it had the mustard spice and I think it had a pepper spice as well all in one thing and so the people who would eat it were like you take a breath and then you put it in your mouth and it's just apparently this very sensory experience it was um <clears throat> It was not for me. I did not even try. At the time, I had much lower spice tolerance than I do now, but I was working on it. I was working on it. I used to have no spice tolerance. You know, the thing I said about how, like, my parents didn't really cook. My dad is a really picky eater. He kind of has the <sighs> picky eaterness of, like, a five-year-old. So we didn't eat a lot of these cuisines growing up, and then I had to kind of cultivate that as a young adult myself. <clears throat> well, I think it's very good to be able to tolerate spice. It opens up a wider range of cuisine from around the world and means you have to worry less about um, eat, going out to eat with friends. <coughs> but I, I can't do wasabi. I, I just, I hate, I hate horseradish. <laughs> and 
I don't know if wasabi is actually horseradish or just like horseradish, but like my family, my family puts horseradish on gefilte fish, which is like two of the most disgusting flavors in the world. And they're very disappointed in me, but I will not eat it. <laughs> I hate fish. I hate fish so much. So I, I'm just not a, not a horseradish person. <laughs> Okay, wasabi is actually related to horseradish. Well, there you go. Okay. Yeah, no, it's 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 fine. And then it turns out I can't have milk. I can have cheese, some cheeses, but it turns out I can't do milk or cream or ice cream anymore. I'm very displeased. So I used to like to drink milk, eat ice cream, put tons of whipped cream on my hot chocolate that I made with, with dairy milk, just tragic. So those of you who can, Enjoy it. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, anyway, back to these these folks here. <sighs> Filter fish is, I think, an acquired taste. <laughs> and I just hate fish to begin with. <sighs> it's not my thing. Not my thing. Then again, when they put locks on things, I just put a tomato on because I don't eat fish. Everyone's very disappointed in me. <laughs> I hate fish. I hate it so much. I hate it. The only thing worse than fish is shrimp. Shrimp is the worst food in the world. I hate it so much. <clears throat> All right. So we're talking about this curry arsonist who set things on fire because the curry was too spicy. <clears throat> All right. But it doesn't make any sense in the first place. How did a huge armed guy make it all the way into commissioner's office alone? It's a complete mystery. What? Why don't they just ask C-74 himself? Maybe they did, but they haven't released anything about it. Apparently, it's all a matter of national secrecy. Dun, dun, dun! The music comes to a total halt. <clears> hmm. <throat> Arg! I love his pose. Would you quit throwing my important duty memos away? <coughs> <coughs> All right. I like sushi. I just don't eat sushi with fish, and especially not shrimp. I like crab. I will eat a crab sushi. I will eat a vegetable sushi. It was very exciting to discover that I could, in fact, partake in the, the, the process of eating sushi. It's a very enjoyable experience, okay? All right. Hey, Bailey. What's the matter? You can't even pin up a memo properly? Let me see this thing. Take prisoner C-38 to the telephone room. Yes, he just made a request to use the phone a little while ago. You already told me that earlier. C-38, eh? What did that punk do, anyway? <laughs> punk. The ultimate insult. <clears throat> you never heard the story about the secret rendezvous case? Everything in quotes, get a special name. Secret who what? C-38 was a singer in a band. Oh no. I relate to this one more than I do to an arsonist. His group was playing a concert that was being broadcast all over the country live. And right in the middle of their encore, there was a huge incident. <clears throat> a huge incident? What was it, a murder or something? In a way, it was even worse than a murder, because it had to do with national secrets. It's aliens, isn't it? It's gonna be the blue guys. 
somehow. Huh? National Secrets? A rock band? I'm lost. The song they were doing was called Secret Rendezvous. That's a DDR song. And the way that the animation that plays when you play that song, um, because <clears throat> they have like a music video thing that happens behind you while you're doing, or behind your character while you do the dance. Um, <clears throat> okay, Chrono knows this song. Excellent. Anyway, um, <clears throat> the, it's, I think it's supposed to be two girls singing about their experience. They're separate secret romances probably due to heteronormativity but the way the thing is framed and the way it works my sister and i just called the song Su secret lesbians because <laughs> it looks like they're singing about each other they're like leaning against each other like we're secret lovers hope no one discovers they're like you know yeah <clears throat> i'm glad to know that I'm not the only one <clears throat> who picked up on the not at all subtle sapphic undertones of Secret Rendezvous on DDR, whichever mix that was. Anyway, I like DDR, okay? I wish I could play DDR. I would play DDR and stream DDR if I didn't live on the 12th floor, you know? <clears throat> subtle sapphics, that is a mouthful. The lyrics C38 was singing were completely different from usual. So how is that a huge incident? Because the new lyrics exposed all of the nation's dark, seamy secrets. <laughs> is that kind of like the romance novelist lady? Budget misappropriations, foreign economic strategies, illicit dealings, everything. Okay, okay, that's, that's punk rock. I'm sorry, that is punk rock. Like, kudos to this guy. Way to go. He was caught red-handed in the act of leaking national secrets. Seriously? The case sent shockwaves throughout the country. I really appreciate the repeated dialogue. Like, that makes it extra funny. But it doesn't make any sense in the first place. See, again, we're repeating the dialogue. How would a rock singer know any top secret information? It's a complete mystery. What? Why don't they just ask C-38 himself? Maybe they did, but they haven't released anything about it. Apparently, it's all a matter of national secrecy. Once again, the music cuts out. Dun, dun, dun. Aliens. <clears throat> Humph. Arrgh. Would you quit throwing my important duty memos away? Amazing. Oh, good. Are you ready to see how much gossip we can get? We are about to discover how much gossip they've written in this game. Because we will get to the bottom of it. <laughs> Anyone who doesn't believe me has not watched me stream before. <clears throat> in which case, welcome! <laughs> hey, Bailey! Let me see this thing. Bring dinner to prisoner D99. Hey, hey, D99. I've heard that name before. The chef is preparing it for him right now. Who gets a chef prepared meal in a prison? Somebody very important. Oh, how fancy. D99, eh? Even I know about this one. We can tell, having seen him completely fail to know these two that shock sent shockwaves through the nation. Um, and he had no idea who they were. It's like, whoa, even you, the person who knows literally nothing, knows this one. Um, 
shockwaves and this guy does not know um yeah that's pretty extreme yeah such a sad case hard for us too all right <coughs> so lauren's current crackpot theory based on very little of anything um is that this is like lynn's dad who was maybe uh, uh on the force and then fell in to a life of crime or, or something to do with national secrecy, I guess, is what we have to go off of here. Um, and I don't remember if I had an idea of what the crime was. But that is presumably the person that... Um, <clears throat> that guy who's animated that way is looking out for Lynn because of uh, him. And I'm sure that that him is this guy. D99. Well, I mean, if I say the guy who's animated like that, you know who I mean? Because there's nobody else it could be. Oh, sh oh wait, never mind. Never mind. We've been goofing off with these ridiculous, absurd things that have been happening, and I have been joking around about the the serious or this very silly, goofy things that have been happening. Um, this is a pivot. This may actually be the first truly serious seeming moment because all of the rest of the things that could otherwise have been serious. Um, all the rest of them uh, kind of got undercut by some level of absurdity. Like, even when you have the snipers trying to assassinate Lynn, like, there's silly animations and silly things going on. So it's not too tense. It's not too scary. But yeah. The sound effect is shocking. The change in music is shocking. And the dialogue is shocking. <clears throat> It is very clear that something is different here. He shot his wife, didn't he? Right in front of a family member. Dot, dot, dot. It's just awful. Why in the world did he do it? Why would he do something like that, of all people? The motive, everything, all a complete mystery. It's just ridiculous. It doesn't make sense that he would do anything like that. I don't know the details, but apparently this case is a matter of national secrecy as well. I don't get it! None of it makes any sense! You do know what kind of prison this is, don't you? It's a special prison built just for these kinds of special cases. Yeah, I was kind of getting that impression. So, something that I think is very interesting, um, that kind of sets the stage for your impression of who this character is going to be. <clears throat> this guy on the right does not care at all about literally anything, but he's personally affronted that this man committed this crime when it doesn't seem like something he would do of all people. This is somebody who managed to be held in high regard even by this guy who cares about nothing. That tells me something about this, this unknown D99. I'm very, yeah. No, and it is a very nice contrast to the two previous ones where I, and I was like, we're gonna do the same goofy, silly things. Let's see how absurd and ridiculous these cases get. I was preparing to go through 10 different cases, each more absurd than the last, you know? <clears throat> and then that is not what happens. That's very effective. That D99 
Who knows what he's thinking or hiding behind that beard of his? I don't like any of it. I knew I couldn't take my job seriously without it getting to me. So this is the reason why this guy doesn't care about anything. He was so upset that this happened that he just, just tuned, just checked out. Just, he was done. That's interesting. <clears throat> so the prisoner I'm looking for, D99, was convicted for murder, eh? And he apparently has a beard. That's what you got out of that, Cecil? All right. And then back to goofiness. It's time. <laughs> the way that they're animated. There, it's done. Updated the phone book. Yes, I was here mashing the phone book button. I don't know, like, you can't hear, that one's not very loud. <clears throat> but I really wanted to hear what this has to say about all of this. All right. <clears throat> I don't think there's anything new here. <clears throat> Told her I had information about the case she was investigating, which she's not supposed to investigate, which is a closed case, which is presumably the, the case of her father being framed. That's it. I was convinced her father had been framed for something and she was trying to get to the bottom of it without official support. Framed for the murder of her mother, if I'm reading this right. That's a pretty big deal. Everything about this is like, the stakes just got a lot higher, you know? Like, it's goofy and haha, -ha, people are dying, but it's fine, because as my roommate said, if Lynn's not bothered by it, why should we be bothered by it? It's fine, it's fine, she's fine. <clears throat> but these are actually stakes. She was arrested on suspicion of my murder, but she escaped and she and I are now helping each other. She's looking into a certain murder case. That's, we know that now. There's new stuff, I know it. Ah, here we go. The Pigeon Man. A mysterious murder machine in the building's basement shot and killed Lynn. No big deal, that's fine. <clears throat> Navy Blue Square, a guard at a prison. He sits at his desk and appears to be working. He seems to be on edge and is carefully watching the clock. <coughs> All right, and here is the punk. Rock Jailbird, a rock and roller who sang national secrets during a live nationwide broadcast. He's now creating a horrible cacophony in his prison cell. I love this kid. He's very young looking. I'm very excited about the fact that this is happening. All right, Pigeon Man's office. Oh, that's right, he's got like his like mysterious science stuff. Lynn apparently escaped to the basement through the small cargo elevator. Pigeon Man's basement. Mysterious mechanical murder machine shot and killed Lynn here. Did the junkyard super build that device? <clears throat> Here's this office. It's called a prison in quotes. I promised Lynn I would check out tomorrow's work schedule for prisoner D99. Chicken kitchen. Lynn and the little lady are supposed to meet each other here. All right, that appears to be everything. Oh, he's got beer under his chair too, that guy over there. Hey, Bailey.
would you quit sending these memos over here? No. <laughs> all right, Bailey. Huh? Not until I figure out how you always know the exact instant a memo starts falling. Not until I solve that mystery. Dot, dot, dot. Next time! I will find the answer next time! I guess it's time to try and find a new path. Alright. Fortunately, the game actually tells me. That it is time. Ah, and then it even has a little check mark to show you that it's done. That is good of them. I feel like the qu the quotation marks when they're in like Sissel's dialogue, and especially when they're in the notebook there, I think it's supposed to reflect like that he's not fully remembering the land of the living. So there's things that he doesn't quite get. If that makes sense. So he's like, this is a prison whatever a prison is. It's like, man, you know what a prison is. There's nothing uncommon about knowing what a prison is. Unless you're from another planet. Unless, are you an alien, Sissel? Maybe he's an alien. I don't know why I'm convinced they're aliens. I don't even know if the blue people in Maniac Mansion were aliens, but when I was a kid, I thought they were. <clears throat> it's true, everyone in Ghost Trick shares three brain cells. Brain cells. All right, so the only thing we can do here is this emergency switch that we're going to operate, which is going to send everything over the place. That's going to be very exciting. Are you ready? <clears throat> All right. They're going through this same dialogue. I don't know if the Mani Maniac Mansion people are aliens. I thought they were. Are they? Does anyone know for sure if they are or not? I already found a new path. See, <clears throat> emergency switch. Are you ready to bring down this man's house of cards? <clears throat> I'm sorry, I can't stop dancing to the soundtrack it's not my fault the game is just like that all right let's do it let's do it let us devastate this man's house of cards launching wine everywhere i'm gonna do it oh that's not what i thought was gonna happen and guns to appear. There's are some really big guns. There's no reason why we need such big guns. There you go again, fooling around with that thing. He's so chill about it. Wasn't me. Don't lie. You know you love to see me jump up and prepare for emergency. Oh yeah, sure, way back when I first got this job. But I've had enough of that now. Besides, you always react exactly the same way, see, because you're programmed to have a specific reaction to things. You go through the same animation over and over and over again. Har. 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 Grrr. The emergency switch is probably just loose. Probably because I fooled around with it too much. <laughs> this guy is so unrepentant. Well, it's for emergencies. Don't play with it. Anyway, it wasn't me. Maybe you ought to get it repaired, huh? Well, close it back up. It's making me feel on edge. Nah, too much of a pain. A pain? Proper emergency procedures are a pain to you? What a sad, sad state of affairs. <sighs> Can I complain about the fire alarms that keep going off in my apartment building? 
It's gotten to the point where we get our shoes and coats on and Sophie in her carrier and then we go sit in the stairwell until we get confirmation from someone whether it's a false alarm or not before we go down over 10 flights of stairs. It keeps happening. It's nothing. Or there's one person who like burned food in their kitchen and then they opened the door into the interior hallway to get the smoke out of their apartment. Not the window out into the outside, into the apartment hallway where the heavy duty fire alarms are. Don't do that, folks. <clears throat> Don't do that. Now, we are, aren't too far from one of the, the schools, so it's possible it could have been a young person who didn't know any better, but just in case you don't know any better, let me inform you. When there's smoke in your apartment because of food, so it's not actually a fire, you direct that smoke out the window. Outside. They don't have fire alarms out there. <laughs> if you put the smoke into the interior hallway of your apartment building, the fire alarms there, the smoke detectors there, are way more hardcore because in an apartment a thing can happen like you cooked bacon and it set off a detector, but it's fine. If it reaches the hallway, that means it's a problem because people don't cook bacon in the hallway. Don't put your bacon smoke in the hallway. It was 11.30 p.m. and we'd been up really late the night before because I had a friend in town and I was so tired and we all had to drag ourselves out. <sighs> anyway, don't do that. My building has problems. Apparently, like, all the big buildings in town have problems with fire alarms going off. And, like, I'd rather that than burn to death, don't get me wrong, but I'm still going to complain about it. <laughs> <clears throat> I love this guy. He's just sitting here, like, admiring his house of cards and his 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 wine glass on top of it and just ignoring the fact that the siren is going off and everything like he's just like look what i've done this is great everything here is great this is the best thing that's happened on this job he's just like man night vision goggles oh oops goblet I cannot wreck his house of cards, so that's actually very nice. Oh, I can't do anything with this monitor. Camera. Door. Button. Press. I can't reach his guitar. Why does he have his guitar in person? I'm gonna call shenanigans. <clears throat> Oh, I can overhear his conversation. I'm guessing that's the kid they were talking about. Okay, that's the Sissel's internal dialogue. I get those buttons confused. I suppose that's true. His guitar is part of his soul. You can see it matches his hair. So it, it is, in fact, a continued part of himself. Just like those are not actually shoes. Those are his feet. <laughs> mm. Jailhouse Rock. Yeah, fair, fair, very fair. The one who sang the national secrets. If he's a prisoner, he must have come from the cells. I'm gonna have to ride his guitar, aren't I? Press the button. guy just turns and looks at it and is like huh? Ah. Ah. <clears throat> there we go yeah so this is the thing that was making that horrible noise a second ago look guitars are awesome and you're wrong Guess it's a way for this spiky-haired youth to express himself. Sentiments like, I'm hungry, or I'm thirsty, maybe. Something primitive like that, I bet. Cecil, what? 
Sissel what? <clears throat> Peace out. I'm done. All right, C38. Back to your cell. Hey, guard man. How about giving me a little space? That crazy walk of yours is dangerous, man. <laughs> I walked back. A proper walk for a properly led life. Now let's go. Now this actually says a properly lead life. They have the wrong form of lead because lead actually gets conjugated from lead into lead, but it loses the A. However, the word lead is a homophone with the word lead that is spelled like the word lead, but has nothing to do with leading somewhere and is actually a mineral. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, they missed this one consistently. Uh, to be fair, people get this wrong a lot. Homophones. Dreadful. <laughs> or, or, or it could be lead poisoning. This is, that's a proper walk for a properly lead poisoned life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I okay. We're gonna hit headcanon that somehow it gives them super guard powers. It's a very charming game. It is a very charming game. Oh man, you haven't even seen missile yet, have you? That's okay. If missiles gonna be at the chicken place. Missile had better be at the chicken place, but we'll see. <clears throat> Yo, no lectures, man. I walk my own path, my own way to my own music. Bum, bum, bum. Ba -da 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 -da. I'm sorry. Oh wait, there's a chicken guy there. So I finally made it to the cells. Now to find prisoner D99 and check out his work schedule for tomorrow. What could Lynn possibly want with that information? She's gonna break him out, obviously. <coughs> okay, so it looked like, I think I saw an artist. And I saw a chicken lover. I don't know. I'm curious to see who else I'm going to encounter. Damn! Don't think I can take another second in this stinking pit! Looks like guard man is gone. All this waiting is wiping me out. Hope this one will finally do it. Okay, so he has, like, an entire rock band set up in his cell. Like, there's a drum kit. No. Guitaru Man is amazing. And nobody better slander that game. Toby Fox clearly liked it because he based the Undyne Battle off of... Defense Mode. I think it was Defense Mode. I'm Guitar Man. I love that game. It's got such good music. You want you want good music? Do you like guitars? And if not, why not? And if yes, go play Guitar Room Man, or at least listen to the soundtrack. But the absurdity of that game's storytelling and its voice acting and the character designs, it's just it's an amazing experience. I feel like I should force all of you to watch Guitar Room Man. But I don't know how good I am at it anymore. We could do that. If we needed like a really silly little one shot thing. <laughs> I could try streaming it if I could get my hands on it somehow. It's amazing. Yeah, but Undyne's really short. And Guitar Room Man is an entire game filled with songs. And that's only one part of it. But I am a lot better at games than I used to be. <clears throat> okay, well maybe we'll do Guitar Room Man. Would you like that? 
Would you have fun with that? Oh man, I love that game. I think I honestly, I think that the people who watch me stream would like that game. <laughs> All right, so for some reason, this weirdo has flushed a piece of paper down the toilet or is going to flush a piece of paper down the toilet. We'll see what this does. He's got the yes and the no's, and it looks like he pulled off a yes. <coughs> I wonder if he's trying to communicate a message to his bandmates to come rescue him. Or something like that. Come on, sausage head! Hmm. This prisoner obviously isn't the one I'm looking for. Prisoner D99 has a beard. Is that the only thing that gave it away? You know what this guy looks like? This guy looks like a character you'd roll up in Katamari. It's one of those little blackboards Lynn said would be in the cells. Maybe I should check out Spikey's schedule for tomorrow. <laughs> you can't hear me over... Can't do anything to the bunk, okay. These notes, okay. There's a pad of note papers hanging on the wall. There's a red O drawn on each one. I think it's some kind of letter or symbol, but I don't recall what it means. There's a pad of note papers hanging on the wall. There's a red X drawn on each one. I think it's some kind of letter or symbol, but I don't recall what it means. Sorry, you're gonna get things repeated, and then repeated, and then repeated again. <coughs> All right, here we go. So this is one of those little blackboards Lynn mentioned. Let me just give it a little read. Hmm. Tonight, I lost a lot of things. My life, my memory, but there's a certain skill I've barely lost to be carried. You can't read, Sissel? Oh no, that's gonna make it really hard to do what Lynn asks you to do. I can't read! That is amazing. I'm sorry, <laughs> this is amazing. Why? Why reading? I can see that there's some kind of writing on the blackboard, but I have absolutely no idea what it means. If I can't read prisoner D99's work schedule for tomorrow, what do I do now? Get somebody to read it out loud to you? What am I supposed to report back to Lynn now? If I tell her I couldn't read it, she'll kill me! Except you're already dead, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. But actually, I guess I don't have to worry about that one too much. <laughs> that's true. <clears throat> anyway, I might as well try to find prisoner D99 cell. Maybe I'll eavesdrop. Hopefully I'll at least be able to find out something while I'm there. I can't go back to Lynn empty-handed. But of course, the ghost doesn't actually have hands. I love that he's literally talking to himself, but he also has to switch over into internal dialogue out of habit. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry, buddy. All right. This telephone, it looks like it's an internal line only. It doesn't call outside the prison. So the only places I can go with this telephone are other phones within the building that I've already possessed. So that will just take me right out. It's a shortcut. <clears throat> There's an emergency button. It's a bunk and a very empty room. That's just sad. There's no rock band or anything here. The 
guard room is the only place I can go to. <clears throat> sure, why not? Can you not read in your dreams? That's never come up for me. This guy says, argh. And he holds his pose until the other guy turns around. What's with you all of a sudden? What do you think of my quirky behavior? Surprised? Huh? You seemed bored, so I thought I'd wake you up. You can call that my gotcha move. What do you think? Dot, dot, dot. If a normal person pulled a move, my move like that, sure, I might be startled. But this is you we're talking about. Oh, okay. Dot, dot, dot. How can you be so insensitive? I was only trying to open up communication between us. I thought... Do we ship these boys? Is that what's happening here? Do we ship these boys? I think we might have to. I think we might be contractually obligated to ship these boys. Oh, good. Everyone else ships these boys too. Wonderful. Good. Okay, excellent. Carry on then. <laughs> Amazing. <clears throat> I mean, in the long-standing tradition of Ace Attorney games, we've got to ship some boys. Do your work, Bailey. What a team. Okay, so you can no longer go anywhere or do anything. Internal extension or external line? We're gonna go to the internal extension. Upper row of cells. Let's see where else we can go from here. I mean, I guess we might as well just start pressing random buttons, right? Why not? Hmm, an emergency button. An emergency in a prison. That's gotta be a pretty bad situation. We'll just give it a little try. You know, no big deal. I caused quite an uproar, I guess. I bet each prisoner reacts differently to the alarm. It might be fun to watch. Let's see, if I want to change the view, I can all right, I can move the screen. <clears throat> Maybe their behavior will give me a clue about my next step. <clears throat> okay, so we've got an artist. Maybe this is my guy. He's got a beard. He is covered in paint. And he's painted something like it's watching him. He is not at all phased. The chicken baby man is strange looking. All clear. Okay, the chicken baby eggplant. Does he have a plunger on his head? Is that a plunger on his head? So if I sound the alarm, it gets people moving, eh? Maybe I can use their movements to get around myself. That way I can get an idea of what's going on in each cell. Yeah, so this guy has a bell he can ring. He is wearing, maybe that's a bowl on his head. He does not have a beard. Oh, 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 sausage head. This is sausage head. <clears throat> Do not lick the spoon that you used He's going to go rescue his friend. Oh, look at that. 
there's a way that you can oh he's digging oh oh the guy's letting him know if it's clear or not for him to do his digging that's what that signal is all about but he can't dig very long because he gets tired so he digs a little bit and then he falls asleep and then he wakes up he's like I can do this so he digs some more so he's trying to dig their escape or at least he's trying to dig his own escape <clears throat> That's interesting. Yes, the sausage had redemption. We got a staircase that looks like that might be a can of soda or something. This is an empty cell. So that's a chicken man. And the painter is just entirely unfazed by everything. guy is still digging. And this guy is going to town here. He's got a basketball too. All right, well, let's see what happens when we press the button. So this guy can't hear what's happening up here. Oh. Sorry, I'm just getting an idea of what happens. So I'm gonna have to get the timing on this guy right here. So he goes down. <clears throat> ah, this other guy's like, oh shoot. Gotta put my toilet back and go back into bed. Like I'm doing nothing weird. I'm just laying here, thinking about chicken. All clear. Trick time. All right, yes, I already noticed that. All right, you ready? Go, 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 he says. I don't know actually because it looks like oh yeah that totally is a thing that goes onto his brain like his a little plunging device thing that goes onto his head that's really weird do the rest of them have things like that nobody else has a bed oh that is weird I don't know that I like that. Did I, oh, did I miss, oh, I missed the other guy. Shoot. Oh, I didn't realize I wouldn't be able to get it from the outside. Okay, so once you're inside one of these rooms, okay, I get it. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, but nobody else has a thing like what this guy's laying on. See, he lays down and it zooms onto his brain. Is it pulling his head to make his head longer? I don't know what's going on there and I don't like it. It's, it's uncomfortable. Okay, we're gonna try again. No, wrong button. Wait, I can't do it? Ah, I have to wait until it's done. Okay. Okay, we're going to try this again. We're going to wait for this other guy to get here. Wrong way. Oh, 
I figured it out. I figured it out. I'm gonna have to get into the other guy's cell. And, and I'm gonna have to go over there. Okay, hold on, actually, no, we're gonna do this. This is the yes button, so we're gonna do this. We're gonna hang out here. All right, I think I figured it out. I think I've solved the problem. I thought I was gonna be riding down, like, following the guard, but instead, I'm gonna get flushed. <laughs> Are you ready to get flushed? All clear. At least I think this is what to do. <clears throat> the guy looks up the camera, he's like, yeah, I got this. Go, go, go! Let's take a ride down a toilet. Ah, that's the jingle. That's what the bell is for. All right. <clears throat> so he keeps it in a... He keeps it in a thing of water there. It's like, good, everything's ready to go. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> All right, updated the phone book. Oh man, phone book time. Sorry, folks. <clears throat> but there's characters. They have such ridiculous animations. Curry loving jailbird. Oh, this is the guy who set things on fire. An odd fellow who laid siege to the Metro Police Department and demanded curry and rice. He now appears to be digging a tunnel out of his prison cell. He's just really weird. By the looks of him. That must be the curry lover from the police department's siege case. But never mind that. Where did he go? What's going on in this cell? Anyway, there's a little blackboard here, too. Just to be safe, maybe I'd better check the curry lover's schedule for tomorrow, too. Just in case this all magically remembers how on earth he's going to, uh, or remembers how to read. <coughs> you know what's delicious? Curry. So I can bring him back if I ring the bell. Let's see. I still can't read, but I'd better go check out prisoner D99's cell anyway. Maybe I can find some kind of information that would help Lin out. Besides, I want to see what this prisoner Lin is investigating looks like. I want to see what the heck that machine is. Okay, so all I can do is ring the bell. Oops, I'm gonna go in this guy's sp spoon. It looks like the curry lover comes back when he hears the bell. I can't make head or heads or tails out of his behavior once he gets back, though. But this prisoner isn't the one I'm looking for. I'll just chalk this guy up to it takes all kinds. I'd better try to find a path to D99 cell. <clears throat> oh, that's easier than I thought. I guess I'll get off the spoon for now. He's like, huh? Question mark. Guess I'll go get my spoon. Should I let him take me back there? No. Same thing here. It looks like this is just an internal phone too. It doesn't call outside. So the only places I can go with this telephone are other phones within the building that I've already possessed. All right, <clears throat> so I've got an emergency button that I can press. I can get into this guy's room. This is where I want to be. He looks 
relatively normal and he's got this big pink hoodie that makes him relax like his, it looks like he's like friendly he goes hmm <clears throat> what a strange cell and the prisoner inside it he seems to be enjoying himself no i think you're right i guess it is a smock but it goes all the way around yeah this is the last cell in this area so that means that the man humming to himself must be prisoner D99, according to what the guards said. <clears throat> D99, eh? Even I know about this one. Yeah. He shot his wife, didn't he? Right in front of a family member. What in the world really happened? And why is Lynn so concerned about this prisoner? I don't know the answers, and I guess there's no need for me to know. I have only one objective, and that's to find out what this painter's work schedule is for tomorrow. All right. We gotta check this out, folks. Faded Jailbird. Prisoner D99. Lynn asked me to check out his work schedule for tomorrow. He apparently shot and killed his wife. He now appears to be enjoying himself as he paints a picture in his prison cell. <clears throat> I don't know, mister. That seems kind of... kind of sketchy to be enjoying yourself. I don't know. I don't know. Wrong button. What is this? A picture frame. You ready to see a picture that probably has... <clears throat> like a baby Lynn and her mom and this guy because if you look at his bangs and the way that they are textured like french fries they look kind of like Lynn's ponytail I don't know if that actually means anything <clears throat> but we'll see you ready to have the big reveal we're gonna do the big reveal no not a big reveal, huh? Photos, eh? I wonder if these are of his family. This one looks like a young woman holding a baby. Their faces have been blotted out with black paint. Oh. Did he do it out of hatred or some other emotion? <clears throat> Thankfully, that's not something I need to know right now. Okay, well, I was excited, but apparently I don't get to be excited about my big reveal yet we'll get there <clears throat> and i will be very excited when we do all right let's examine this newspaper article that he's got framed that's such an interesting picture like i'm trying to make sense of the thing he's painted on the wall i'm just gonna go with aliens a newspaper article has been cut out and framed Unfortunately, I can't read. <laughs> right, right. I guess he can't read that either. It's probably about D99's case. Man murders wife or something like that. There's a picture of the alleged culprit in the article. Yep, it's this prisoner, all right. Who even knows if that's actually what it is? So, the work schedule for tomorrow of prisoner D99 would be really useful if I could read. The information Lynn's looking for should be written on this blackboard. Unfortunately, I've lost the ability to read. That's just, I'm sorry, it's just really funny that <laughs> he's lost his ability to read. But here I am anyway. The least I can do is take a look. Huh? What could this mean? There's nothing written on the board at all. I think something was written on the blackboards of the other prisoners. This board is as clean and blank as the day it was hung there. <clears throat> so I have the answer Lynn was looking for. Tomorrow's work schedule for prisoner D99 is nothing. Would this information mean anything to her? It's not up to me to know or care. That's how I feel at the moment anyway. not being able to read. I was wondering how this was going to turn out. <laughs> <clears throat> the 
some things in this world can be read, even if one can't read. <laughs> Wisdom from Sissel right here. Prisoner D99's work schedule for tomorrow is blank. I'd better get this important information to Lynn as fast as I can. I do not get to go into his waste basket. D99 dinner. That's a chicken. Quite a feast tonight, I see. Ah, and I'm absolutely crazy about this chicken. Dot, dot, dot. It's too bad it's all cold and hard, though. I'd say it's been about two hours since it was cooked, judging from the way it feels. <coughs> Yeah, so he's going to have been a detective who can tell things like how long a, bo a body's been dead or how long a chicken's been sitting out since it was cooked or whatever. Dot, dot, dot. D99. I know it's kind of pointless to ask now, but just the same, I still want to know. Why did you do it? Dot, dot, dot. I agree. It's pointless to ask now. My case is colder than this chicken and has been forgotten by everybody. My case is colder than this chicken. I'm sorry, that's a good line. Myself included. Detective Jowd. Now then, let me eat in peace before it gets too cold to cut. So he is a detective. Dot, dot, dot. There's one more thing I've been wondering for a long time. What's that? When he turns and looks over his shoulder, he just looks, the animation just, he looks really cool. Who is the man in that painting? Oh, this. Well, being in prison like this, you start to forget faces, you know? So I paint the faces that I don't want to forget. And this is the last of those faces. I gotta say, that I didn't expect. That I didn't expect. Did you see? Did you see? It was Sissel. It was Sissel himself. Now, could you leave me alone for a bit? Let a man eat in peace. Okay, sure. Sorry to bother you. So this is the last of the faces he doesn't want to forget. They're like, by the way, did you notice? Did you notice? Hey, hey, did you notice? Well, <coughs> let me tell you. What in the world? What in the world could this mean? Why is there a painting of me in this man's cell? Who exactly is this prisoner? The man whose case Lynn is investigating is painting a picture of me in his cell. I have to go see Lynn fast. And not for her sake, for mine, to solve this mystery of me. That is wild. I can ride his napkin over here. Open his wastebasket. Yeah. This song is really cool. Okay, well, I don't really know what the point of that is. Like, I don't have guesses yet as to why Sissel is being painted by this man. I mean, I can try to come up with something wild. <coughs> but why would, why would Sissel be the last of the faces he doesn't want to forget? He has... He has 
blacked out his own family's faces with paint. Presumably to protect them. So... One wonders whether there's a kind of death note situation going on, perhaps, where he paints the faces, like may maybe there's something about the, the faces that he can remember. Something's gone wrong where like those that he can visualize will die. And he doesn't want to risk that happening to his family. It's also possible that maybe he is somehow responsible for me being able to have like the superpowers of of the dead because not everybody can do what Sissel can do. Um, because it could be that he arranged to have Sissel killed, but. Like, that wouldn't necessarily make sense if Sissel is going to be... Well, okay, so we knew that Sissel was going to... He said that he had information for Lynn. And he said that he had information... He said that he had information for Lynn about this case. But he also was going to make some sort of a deal with the blue guy tonight. Like, was he going to turn Lynn over to the blue guy? I don't know. I don't think I have enough pieces to actually build anything out of this yet. <coughs> but there's something significant about the, about the faces he remembers and the faces he forgets. So I've got questions I want to ask Lynn. i got to get to a place that has an external line and fast. I'm just, I'm looking at this, like, walrus man type thing behind him and these colors, this red. That's not the turning back time clock in any capacity, is it? I'm trying to remember what colors are on that. I guess we'll see that probably soon enough the next time Lynn gets killed and comes back to life. <clears throat> but this ominous looking figure, I don't know. But that's interesting. So now we know, because I figured my story and Lynn's story were going to wind up overlapping, and now we have evidence of that going to happen. <coughs> All right. Shall we go ahead and uh, teleport back to go see Lynn? Are we ready, are we ready to go tell her and see what's going on? So Cecil focusing on wanting to solve his own mystery is a sort of selfish thing, but it's also kind of an understandable thing. So if Cecil is a bad guy, which he could very well be if he's working with the blue guys, like, it'd be interesting if this is his redemption. Well, we'll see. The phone rings. Oh. Oh, this is new. Is this the guy whose mustache got burned off? <clears throat> this is headquarters. What's the status over there? Oh, chief, it's you. They're making preparations now. No problems, sir. How much longer, then? One more hour, sir. I see. Carry on, then. Wait, are they going to have her... Like, is her father about to be executed? And that's why he has nothing on his agenda for tomorrow? Are they making the preparations to execute him? Well, we'll see. Oh, one more thing. Inspector Cabanello wants, wishes to speak to you. <laughs> Saunders on in, he has to kick. He has to boogie. Evening, Cabanella here. How you boys doing? Inspector Cabanella, fine, sir. You got another little call tonight, didn't you? From my baby? From Lynn? Uh, well, yes. She did say don't tell anyone, but you know. 
Did my girl have anything interesting to say? Uh, not especially. She hung up almost immediately. I see. Next time she gives you a buzz, be, f be sure to let me know right away. That's a good fellow. Yes, sir. You try to cover it up, and I'm sure you'll regret it very much. Very much. I get the feeling I don't think Cavanella is a good guy. I think Cavanella is a bad guy. But we'll see. <coughs> yes, sir. I'll call you right away, sir. Immediately. I don't know the tropes for detective fiction very well, so... Don't forget, she's a fugitive after all. Yes, sir. Carry on, then. I might pop in a little later. Like, it could be that he wants her off this case because he knows the truth of what happened to her mother. And he doesn't want her to expose it. And maybe he doesn't personally have anything against her, but maybe he is afraid that she's going to uncover whatever he's covered up. <clears throat> yes, sir. Looking forward to seeing you, sir. That means I can call those place, that place now. Yeah. Lynn should be heading for the chicken kitchen right now. But the call from police headquarters intrigues me too. It's looking pretty obvious right now. That white suited inspector suspects Lynn. And she's being considered a fugitive. This is not good. Wonder if I should go check in on the chief and the inspector in white too. I sure should. Inspector Cavanella seems to be looking for her, too. You're Lynn, I mean. Inspector Cavanella? What would the special investigation unit want with Lynn? I don't know. I guess something happened that we don't know about. Tonight of all nights. Maybe they're just gonna have a party. That's all they're making preparations for a party. Inspector Cavanella must be upset tonight, too. Weren't he in prisoner D... Weren't he in Prisoner D99, Detective Chow, good friends? That's why he had a meal cooked specially by the chef, if it's going to be his final meal. Huh. You sure about that? <clears throat> if they were such good friends, how come Inspector Cabanella never came to visit him? He's the head of special investigation. He is a very busy man. What's wrong? Jowd was my hero, you know. I wanted to be a detective because of him. But look at me, rotten away in a place like this, and I can't even do anything to help Lynn. What am I doing with my life? Dot, dot, dot. This new side of you is kind of endearing. We ship it. We ship it. Dot, dot, dot. Anyway, the thing to do is work at fixing what you can little by little. This is life advice. This is actually good life advice from Ghost Trick. Like, for example, your house of cards. It collapsed, you know. Uh... Well, it's okay, my house of cards will probably collapse too, but it's fine. It's fine. I can no longer do anything else, but that was interesting, yeah. So Inspector Jowd, what, or Detective Jowd was, a, was an amazing, wonderful, everybody wants to be like him hero. Then he shoots his wife and is imprisoned for it, something to do with national secrets. Inspector Cabanella was his friend, but won't go see him. One could argue, oh, well, you know, maybe he's so offend like so horrified at what his friend has done. And he supervises his his friend's daughter trying to uh, make sure that she grows into a happy, successful young woman. Or he's keeping an eye on her because he suspects that she's out for revenge because she does not does not believe that what the official reports say is what actually happened. And he, he has, he just feels kind of slimy. Maybe that's a bias that I have, but I don't trust him. <clears throat> I think he's in on whatever it is. 
external line. Let us go to... As much as I want to see the chicken kitchen, I want to go spy on these guys first. Okay. They did give me the option either way. Or do I want to put on my hat and ask for advice? Uh, I think I might want to do that. Um, is one of these an optional side paths? A side path? Or are these both um, like you have to do them in the right order? And if you go to the wrong one, then you'll go to the wrong one and it'll tell you to go the other. You are allowed to answer this question. Okay. <clears throat> so neither of these is optional and you have to do the right one. <clears throat> so if I go here and she's not there, then it'll be like, oh, Lynn's not here yet. I guess I should go check on these guys. Chicken kitchen. This is where that little lady and Lynn are supposed to meet, but. Okay. I don't see either one of them here. I guess they haven't shown up yet. All right. <coughs> Sorry. No sense wasting time just standing around waiting for them. Maybe I can check some other place out in the meantime. Like police headquarters. Lynn is apparently being treated as a fugitive there. Is that white suited inspector really on Lynn's side? Okay. There we go. I just wanted to double check. I just wanted to make sure. Because I kind of suspected this was what was going to happen, but I wasn't sure. So I appreciate <clears throat> exactly the, uh, that exactly the answer to my question and no more. All right, we're gonna go to the police station. Cecil, I think you might be a criminal, my friend. And this, this, oh my God. The chief has bare feet and is fidgeting. All right. Preparations seem to be going smoothly over at the prisoner, eh, Inspector Cabanella? Cabanella. Oh. He is having a thought or a feeling about this. He dot dot dots, but his portrait's different. Usually he's all, <laughs> I'm gonna dance. And this time he's actually looking sad and thoughtful. We were just a little too late. So close, eh, Inspector? We still have a little time left, Chief. Not much, but some. We've had Point X surrounded all night. If he shows up, we nab him and we can still make it. By the way, what's going on with that other case? The junkyard murder. That's me. She did it, eh? No question about it? Dot, dot, dot. She's a bad little baby. Disappearing from the scene like that. Wonder where she ran off to play. What did he just say? She did it? Did I hear that right? I think they were talking about the culprit who killed me. No way. So the implication here is that they believe that she killed him. <sighs> Which could make sense if he was like, hey, I'm a criminal involved with the group of people who have framed your father for murder or something like that. We're gonna take a look and see. Cause it could just be that he's pretending to believe she did it because he's covering something up. I just don't trust him. All right, Faded Jailbird. Yeah, cause faded meaning he's he's gonna he's gonna die tonight would be my guess. 
unless somebody shows up tonight at a particular place, then we can go through with something. We can still make the thing that we're trying to make happen, happen. The fate of the universe is at stake or something? I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, okay. Prisoner D99, people call him Detective Jowd. He apparently killed his wife. The picture he was painting in his cell was a portrait of me. Itchy man. <laughs> the chief of police, the chief of the police's special investigation unit. His job is to sit at his desk in the station, give the detectives their orders, and wiggle his itchy toes. <laughs> what a character trait. The headquarters of the special investigation unit. The inspector in white and the chief seem to be talking about something important. Okay. I just don't believe it. Why would she do why would she do a thing like that? I don't have the answers for you, chief. I don't want to believe it any more than you do. And yet, after seeing this, maybe we don't have any other choice but to believe, baby. Is that the security camera tape the investigation unit just delivered? I can't deny. It's some pretty solid evidence against her. Evidence? Nothing like it, baby. Humph. Boy, a murder case now on such an important night. I think you have that wrong, Chief. A murder case now for the very reason that it is such an important night. Before I go find Lynn at the chicken kitchen, it sounds like there's an important piece of info here I shouldn't miss. Pretty solid evidence, he says. This I have to see. But it's funny. Why do I have this bad feeling about what's on this tape? It's gonna be you being shot, which you don't want to see, I'm sure. Maybe she did it accidentally. Maybe she got startled and shot me by accident. There's an alarm, which I cannot set off. A speaker, which I can't do anything with. A screen, which I can lower. Oh man, listen to that funky bass line. Man! That, this is a good soundtrack. It's really good at what it does. Let's watch the footage of Lynn shooting Sissel, shall we? She doesn't seem like she would be very good at uh, pretending to be something she's not, but maybe I'm mistaken. Let's see. junkyard where I died had a security camera and it captured the moment of my death perfectly and what the tape showed me was the cruelest truth imaginable oh he's got a thing for her <clears throat> you see she's got french fry ponytail He's telling her some news. She's really upset. She doesn't want to believe it. She shakes her head. He's like, I don't know, man. He leans. He's not happy about this. He feels bad. She takes out her gun. He's not even doing anything about it. She can't bring herself to do it. She doesn't, she doesn't want to. Yeah, I think he says you have to kill me and she doesn't want to do it because she fails at it at first. saw myself shot right before my own eyes by Lynn. There goes my only lead. I feel like I've died all over again. Hi Luna Seer, welcome, welcome. We are playing Ghost Trick, which is a delightful and charming and very weird game. <laughs> this can't be exactly what it seems like. There's gotta be more going on here than what, what it seems since we can't hear what they're saying. One thing sticks with me, though. Lynn looked so, so surprised on that tape. What in the world did I tell her? The 
truth is the truth, no matter how many times you watch it, Inspector Cabanella. It wasn't me who played the tape just now, baby. Oh, by the way... They're just gonna just ignore it. Oh, by the way, Inspector Cabanella. There's something on that tape that troubles me. Is it the thing that I was holding that seems to have gone missing? Is it that Sissel just stood there while she pulled out a gun and he didn't even try to fight it? Is it that she hesitated and tried again and he didn't run away? He didn't react. Like, that's really, I think, telling. I think he told her something expecting her to shoot him or telling her to shoot him and then was like, I will wait until you do it. That's interesting. And what's that, Chief? I'm all ears. I had a look at all the photos of the crime scene as well, but... The place where the victim was shot and where the body was found is clearly different. Hey, he's right. That is strange. Yeah, who moved your body down there, Sissel? We wondered about that. I don't know if that ever got answered. It's just that his body did get moved. The hitman in black is the one who kicked me downstairs. Okay. But I changed his fate, so he should have been out of the picture. But there I am, down on the lower level. I have the answer to your mystery right here, a few minutes after the murder took place. So it's very dramatic and very stylish. Here's his dead body. Oh, there's a cat. Wait. There's a cat. There's a cat in the box who knocked him down there. There's just a cat. Just a cat. Is that a black cat? You got it, baby. A furry feline messed up our crime scene. And then the little cat culprit vanished into the night. Hmm. It looks like my destiny of being knocked downstairs is very hard to alter. This is Point X. Come in, Chief. This is going to be the kid at the park who was hanging out with the... Uh, unwillingly hanging out with the, the Kokiri child person. Grown up. Kokiri. Tingle. Like. I wonder why. The Chief here. Did he show up? I uh, know, sir. Not yet. But... Oh, idiot! I told you to stay off the radio unless it was important. But this is important, sir. Somebody else showed up. A rookie detective, Lynn. Oh. What? You see my baby over there, do you? I heard she was on the lamp. What do you want me to do, Chief? What do you say, Inspector? He's gonna shuffle and do his little dance. I want there to be a cosplayer of him who does that ridiculous thing. Detective, get my baby away from Point X. Cause that's where the aliens are landing and Lynn, he's like, Lynn killed this guy and we'll deal with that later, but she needs to not get aliens. Do it now, man, and then hold on to her. Yes, sir, I'll go get her now, sir. What's the meaning of this? Why would Lynn show up at Point X? It took the Special Investigation Unit six months to pinpoint that location. This is gonna be the Supernatural Investigation Unit, which includes aliens? Don't know, Chief, but I'd say it wasn't a coincidence. Perhaps. Oh, that doesn't sound good. What happened? Detective, come in. Dot, dot, dot. Now what? What happened this time? Damn it! This calls for a telephone call to Point X. Allow me. And that's gonna be... Oh my god, his little posing. Ugh. This is so that I can know what Point X is. Oh, wait, no, that is, that is not the location I thought it was. I 
thought it was the park. Maybe the park overlooks the chicken place? I was not expecting that. What are you doing? Get your buns over here. What did you say? Now I finally understand. I finally know what it's like for our poor hungry customers who have their food deliveries delayed. Wait, is she dead on the floor? It looks like she's dead on the floor and his nose looks like a beak and I'm just... Excuse me, but this is the chicken kitchen, is it not? What? Aren't I talking to the police? The police? Did something happen there you need assistance with? Something happened here, you ask? More like, there's nothing left here. I gotta go. Wait, wait! Updated the phone book. Somebody's dead. Oh. What's going on? Something, that's what. Something is definitely going on. That's, yes. And that something is far from nothing. That's for certain. This, this really feels like Ace Attorney dialogue, doesn't it? <sighs> but it's not Lynn who's dead, at least, for once. <laughs> Thanks for the tea, Chief. I'll be on my way. You going to Point X? Point X, eh? I'll leave that to the boys. There's someplace else I gotta be. Inspector. Your being there isn't going to change anything. Why put yourself through it? He's gonna go see the, execu the execution. That's what it is. That's what this is going to be. Dot, dot, dot. I have a responsibility and I'm going to see it through to the end. Besides, it's not quite over yet. Right, that's true. Do what you must then. I wonder if they don't want him to be executed, but they can't do anything about it because of the system. And then he just saunters off. What a weirdo. Which could be said of the entire cast. Prisoner D99's schedule for tomorrow was blank. It seems like forever ago that I found that out. And now my mind is even blanker than that blackboard was. Love this song. Lynn, my only lead and my partner, shot me. What did it all mean? I knew where I had to go to get my answers. The chicken kitchen. The point X the police have surrounded. In the place where something big just happened. What will Lynn be involved in this time when I find her there? Good question. That felt like a long chapter. Okay, we cleared chapter six. We're gonna save. We're gonna continue playing. 10.05 PM, chapter seven. I just can't get the images I saw at police headquarters out of my head. The person who shot me tonight is the last person in the world I want to believe did it. Now I'm here at the place she and I agreed to meet, the restaurant the police were staking out as Point X. But when I got here, I found the place in ruins. Ho! Oh, that's a lot of dead people. Ho! Oh, they... Whoa, what in the world happened here? This is the same giant piece of chicken that we saw on the wall of that one pyromaniac guy, the arsonist, the curry fan. That is the poor young man from the park who drove his vehicle in here because he was told to go apprehend Lynn, I guess, and then something went wrong. They have, oh my God, his nose. There's the chef's hat. There's the tire, which I can roll around. Oh, I'm gonna be able to, oh, I'm gonna be able to connect with that guy's body. I guess he's the one I'm going to be able to bring back. That'd be nice. Oh, the heavens, what do I do? If I had known something like this would happen, I would have paid the poor child more. I would have cooked more chicken for her. I would have sung to her as much as she liked until she'd had her fill. Actually, about the singing, she did tell me she'd had her fill a time or two. The chef seems to be in quite a panic. Anyway, at least it doesn't look like the waitress is dead. 
Okay, good. That's a relief. Oh, before we do this, we gotta, we gotta unprogress the plot. You just, you, you know how it is. I wouldn't be Lauren if I progressed the plot immediately. Ah, there you are again. It's getting late. How are things progressing? I saw the person who shot me. I saw the whole thing with my own eyes. Well, well, that is a big step forward by the sounds of it. Forward, huh? Doesn't feel like it. Here, let me share something with you. What's that? The truth is sometimes hidden in the shadow of what's being looked at and can't be seen properly. Don't forget that. A shadow of what's being looked at, huh? I'll remember that. In other words, things are not as they seem. Do not think that your immediate interpretation of events is correct. <coughs> We're going to continue. This little storyline, I wonder if it's going to actually wind up being significant. I'm sure it'll be tied in somehow since we have issues of national security. I've slept very badly the past few nights. I haven't been able to fall asleep before 3 a.m., which is not great. It doesn't look like the novelist intends to sleep tonight. <laughs> She'll complete her tale of love even if she has to type her fingers to the bone. Something seems to be missing from this bed. Yeah, the girl has snuck out. I don't see the bags of ice, the little girl... The little girl had on her feverish forehead. Hmm, she's not here. Did she go to the powder room? Is she out having a good time on the town? I'd better be going myself. Well, that's interesting. I wonder if she's gonna go back, if she's sneaking out to go visit her dad. Let's find out. It'll take her a little time to get there, but. If only I could catch a breeze and fly away. Or maybe even just catch a cold. If I caught a cold, would Emma take pity on me? Would Amelie, cr would Amelie cry for me? No, I don't think she would. Why would she? Oh, if only I could blow up and fly into a million pieces. That's what's gonna happen with this stack of papers on his desk. I don't think I need to come back here again for a while. Too bad. We're gonna keep coming back. This will be interesting. Yes, we're getting the flavored text because we're at the chicken kitchen. The entrance to the nearly deserted park. The detective who was ordered by Cavanella to perform a stakeout is nowhere to be seen. His van is gone too. And that van just happens to be the one sitting inside the chicken kitchen. I better find out how that happened. All right. I'm just gonna go through everywhere we can. Cause I just I gotta get all the little bits. <clears throat> the little bits add up. I've missed one or two of the bits, but I'm gonna get them all now if I can. It's that old pigeon guy again. He's looking at the stuff he has on the wall. It is weird machinery. All this equipment I've never seen before. Who is this guy anyway, and what's he up to? Mad science, clearly. Doesn't look like he's gonna budge from that spot. Guess I'll go somewhere else. Yeah, he's doing mad science. Probably to do with aliens. You know. Sorry I have to do this every chapter, but I do have to do this every chapter. At least it's pretty quick. Arg. Dot, dot, dot. What do you think of my quirky behavior? Surprised? You seemed bored, so I thought I'd wake you up. You can call that my gotcha move. What do you think? Dot, dot, dot. 
Hey, wait a minute. Are you dead? Dead? Of course not. Oh, thank goodness. I thought I'd surprise you, but you surprised me. You're good. Oh, you're good. This guy is really depressed and upset, and his idiot friend is too much of an idiot to realize that his personal hero is probably going to be executed tonight. Okay, so what's really funny here, and I have to point this out, is that the guy on the left has previously been the one who takes things very seriously, and the guy on the right is the one who doesn't take anything seriously. <clears throat> but actually, as it turns out, the guy on the left has no brain cells. And the guy on the right actually has brain cells. And the problem is that he actually does take things seriously. And the reason why he has slacked off so much is because of how much he takes it seriously. <coughs> so something really serious and bad is happening. And the guy on the left can't even wrap his head around why it's upsetting to the guy on the right. But the guy on the right fully understands what's going to happen, and he is really not okay with it. I think that's a fun little departure, because for so long it feels like one of these guys is the serious one and one of them is the goofy guy. And as we see at this moment, the reality of things is actually reversed from what we think it is. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Character development. We're just gonna take a look. Because apparently this is a thing we can do now. <clears throat> Even time is like a caged animal here. Nothing appears changed since the last time I visited. Spiky is still making that horrible noise. The bearded painter is still attacking his meal with gusto. He's eaten most of it, though. It's interesting he's got that same... Curry lover is still dreaming dreams of curry. My time will soon be locked away from me as well. I can't waste what I have left. I better get going. <clears throat> That's okay, this is still worth looking at. I don't regret looking into this. And I... I like the, um... I like the character development of the guards very much. So we're just gonna continue looking around everywhere we can. Okay, there's literally nothing here. That's fine. <clears throat> we'll go here and then we'll go where we're supposed to go. I'm good, I'm good. I'm not taking too long. <clears throat> Looking troubled, the chief is wiggling his itchy toes. The chief here. It looks like I won't be able to get home tonight. You go ahead and get some sleep without me. He tells his, his I presumably his wife, but his partner, um, that he is, is, he calls himself the chief. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I love you too, honey. Hmm, I guess he was radioing, radioing his wife. If he had called her on the phone, I could have gone and seen what she looked like. Two of them have mustaches. No, three of them have mustaches. It's not apparently a prerequisite for the job. All right, back to the plot of the game. We'll actually play. <coughs> All right. That chapter felt a lot longer than previous chapters. I'm not sure why. Wait, hold on. No, we're gonna look at something. Do you notice when we warp in and out, you can see the shape of the, the chef under his hat and he has a very long head. Like he has an extended head with like an extended thing coming out of it. <clears throat> Look at his look at his head when we come in. Look at look at underneath the hat. Watch this. Watch this. It might mean nothing. Do you see that? You see that? 
Either that or he's got like a, bo a bottle of wine that he's balancing on his head or something like that. I don't know. But there's something under his hat that's weird looking. All right. We're gonna roll. Hold on. According to that police radio conversation I heard, Lynn should be here. But I don't see her anywhere. It seems like bad luck had it in, has it in for that redhead. So I was half expecting to see her in trouble again. I spotted the corpse of the van driver. Maybe he'll be my friend. I can change his fate. Oh no, she's dead too. Okay, we're gonna take a look around here. This looks like a bar with chicken upstairs and a jukebox and chains, which shouldn't be there. You, you really shouldn't have chains in your fancy restaurant. I don't know. This appears to be like the private special room. <clears throat> and then down here's the regular. Yeah, so you think... But we will, uh, we will hopefully change his fate when we save Lynn. Hello again, Lynn. What is this number four? Look at me, I'm dead. What took you so long? Uh, well, that's one way to greet a guy. What happened here? Hey, how should I know? I'm the victim. Is it just my imagination or is she getting more and more brazen every time she dies? She totally is, she's beyond unfazed. Oh, that's because I'm a detective. I have to be tough, you know. Well, and how did it go? Did you check out tomorrow's work schedule for Prisoner D99? <laughs> I love Lynn. She just, she's focused on the job. The little death doesn't make a difference. It's fine. It's a minor inconvenience. Anyway, we've got an investigation going on. Yeah, just like I promised. Actually, I have a few things I wanted to ask you about too. Sure, we agreed to use each other after all, right? Okay, let's swap info then. <clears throat> I'm gonna ask about... Thing is... <sighs> okay, these are presented in an order and this isn't a game that's gonna like trick you and not let you ask all of them. So we'll ask all of them. Let's try this. My murder. On my way here, I stopped by the chief of police's office. Oh, it was just on your way, was it? And while I was there, I saw who did it. I saw my murderer. You saw him? Where? How? Not him. Her. There was a security camera set up there at the junkyard where I got shot. The security tape showed the person who shot me. It was you. No way. You're kidding, right? What do you have to say for yourself, detective? It wasn't me. I didn't shoot you. If I recall, this is what you said about who shot me. My memory just isn't clear on that part. So how can you say for sure that it wasn't you? Be because I told you before, you were supposed to give me some information. Why was it a cat? Information, huh? Maybe that information was the reason you shot me. What? What do you mean? Why she shot me. You said you had information on the case I'm looking into, so I would hardly shoot you before I even heard that information, right? I agree, that wouldn't make sense if it was before. Huh? But what if it was after you'd already gotten the information from me? <clears throat> I definitely told you something then. Whatever it was, it really shocked you. What did I tell you? I don't remember. I don't know. You've got to believe me. After you saved me, I thought I got all of my memories back. But maybe I really didn't. You told me something? I can't remember that part at all. You got the information you wanted from me, and then you shot me. Isn't that what happened? No! No, I didn't shoot you! Please tell me. What did you tell me that time? What did I learn from you? Dot, dot, dot. <clears throat> the 
Okay, D99's work schedule. Hello, Resolution Blaze. Yeah, I could see this being kind of kind of cross-examination-ish. So she's very concerned. Conveniently, anybody who might actually remember what had happened then has lost their memory of that encounter. And also, why is that a cat? What is the cat? Is it a magical cat? Maybe it's a magical cat. Maybe it's an alien. <clears throat> All right, Z99's work schedule. Just like you said, each prisoner had a little blackboard in his cell. But the thing is, there wasn't anything written on Prisoner D99's blackboard. It was blank. What? I guess maybe it means his schedule for tomorrow hasn't been decided yet? Blank? Blank? No! Huh? I didn't think she'd lose it over a blank blackboard. How come you're so upset about an undecided work schedule? I get the feeling that back when I was alive, I never had much of a schedule to worry about myself. Because he's a criminal, you see. Do you know what it means when a prisoner doesn't have a schedule for the next day? Huh? It means something? It doesn't mean he doesn't have work to do. It's more like he can't work. And that's because he's going to be executed. They set that up very clearly. E executed? Execution. Do you know what prisoner D99's crime was? In quotes. I think so. They said something about him murdering his wife right in front of a family member. That's what they say, but it's not true. He would never... Detective Jowd would never do anything like that. And the death penalty hasn't been enforced in this country for a very long time. Yeah, so it feels strange to do that for this. Not for decades. Even if the prisoner wants it, like in this case. Ah. Oh man. The prisoner wants it? There's definitely something else going on with this case. I just know it. Maybe it's not her dad. Maybe it's just somebody she looks up to. And I have to find out what. And if his work schedule is blank for tomorrow, I have to do it right now. So this prisoner, D-99, Detective Chow, he must be connected to me in some way, too. He does look really cool. Just look at him. After all, he obviously knows me. You should probably tell her that, Sissel. All right, point X. The police were staking this restaurant out tonight. They called it Point X. Point X, huh? That's a good name for this place. That white-suited inspector was surprised to find out you just casually waltzed in here. Inspector Cabanella? What in the world made you pick this place anyway? I guess I'd have to say because of you. Me, huh? Oh, do you remember that note I found? Yeah, I remember. That note I didn't get a chance to read because I can't read anyway. It's fine. It had a place and a time written on it. The Chicken Kitchen, 10 o'clock. In other words, I was supposed to meet somebody here tonight. Yep, apparently so. I just had to get that information you were going to give me. That's why I came here. It was the only lead I had left. And this here is point X. So that must be the mark the police was waiting for. The mark the police were waiting for was me? Oh. Oh, wow. Sissel, you are at the heart of whatever this is. Man. <coughs> oh, man. Slammer McHammer, I do actually take game suggestions. I have actually a spreadsheet, a Google spreadsheet, that um, if you can go to our Discord and you go to the stream chat channel there, um, I think it should be pinned if you want to take a look and see if what you're recommending has already been recommended. Um, but, but welcome. <laughs> I've been having fun with some character analysis in this game. This game has less layers, but it still has some. And it's very charming. And we're having a very, uh, very significant moment here. <laughs> so 
I'm going to keep that moving forward. But um, but thank you for dropping by. And if you want to pull up a chair, just I, I just don't want to spoil Ghost Trick for you if you haven't played it. It's very good. So what are you going to do now? I mean, you fulfilled your goal, right? You found out who shot you. Are you going to get revenge? That would be easy enough to do. All you have to do is not save me. Dot, dot, dot. That's a good question. Am I a person who cares or a person who doesn't care? Sissel, it's your moment to wonder. Make a decision, my friend. Is this the ending I was hoping for? Had I unraveled all the mysteries of me? No. What am I going to do now? I'm going to save you, that's what. Yeah, that's the spirit, Sissel. You are? I want to know everything. Who I was, why I was killed. And I'd like to know who those guys are, too. I want answers, and I'm going to find them. But to do that, I'm going to need your help. Dot, dot, dot. Okay. I won't say thank you. Not yet. And I won't say I'm sorry, either. But I'll help you... I'll help see to it that you get your answers. Good. Now I think it's time to go back to the past. I can't leave you lying flattened under a huge chunk of chicken forever, after all. Uh, let's rewind time, shall we? Well, that's some... That's some big, big stuff going on there. It's a big stuff happening here. The note said, The Chicken Kitchen, 10 o'clock. I wonder who that pointy-haired man was going to meet here. It is funny to have somebody talking about your character like this, you know? What's this? The menu? Oh man, the waitress does not get paid. Oh. Here you go. They're blue. They're blue. They're blue. Upstairs is for the blue people. Where's my chicken? Ah, oh, that's what was dangling from the chains. Got it. Can I eat that thing? She's really hungry. <laughs> Unnecessarily showing off their 3D. Oh no, no, Lynn. Oh no. Well, she did manage to save the other girl and do a totally sweet backflip, which is very cool. But she then got crushed by a giant chicken. <coughs> okay, it feels like they've got this top secret exclusive part of the restaurant where the blue people can get special, like, fanciness. And the blue people that we saw, like, the, there's, like, the blue commander guy. and He looks very fancy and rich and important. I don't know. I'm very curious. I'm very, very, very curious. And I'm getting really strong, like, Zach McCracken vibes. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Zach McCracken and the little I know of Maniac Mansion, which I never played because it was too scary, but I'm familiar with it. I probably watched my dad play enough of it to be like, oh, no, no, I'm five. This game is not appropriate. <laughs> Just does something incredibly cool right into a Looney Tunes death. That is correct. All right. You're just going bigger and better with each new death, aren't you? Leave me alone. Can I help it if I got tired of dying the usual ways? <laughs> They're getting shot. Well, you know, it wasn't the usual way when you got uh, shot by a gun at the end of a ridiculous murder machine. But I'll say this. It was a death any detective could be proud of. Huh? What makes you say that? The way you saved somebody else before dying yourself. Oh, that waitress? The one with the chicken on her head? The next time you put a chicken on your head, you should try one about the size of the waitresses. I don't understand that line. I'll make a note of that for next time. But anyway, I, that was, I think, I think that was a joke. 
and it didn't land on me. I'm sorry. But the chicken landed on Lynn. Um. Oh, it's because the waitress has a smaller chicken on her head. And Lynn got a bigger chicken on her head. She had to one up her. Oh, thank you. I didn't. The, something about the phrasing of it just did not work. It went over my head. But anyway, if you hadn't tried to save that waitress, you'd still be alive. I couldn't help it. You know, the detective thing and all. I wasn't able to save that poor van driver, though. At that speed, he must have died instantly. Well, we can't let a heroic detective like you stay dead. The root of this whole disaster is clear. The only question is, how do I stop it? Okay, let's get started. The guy drive... Like, why did he drive his car in here? The note said, the chicken kitchen, 10 o'clock. Okay, right. If you're gonna call me anything, at least try to make it my name, Sissel. She didn't know then! Sissel. Sorry about that. I'm really bad with names. The future of this lady's career as a detective looks pretty bleak. Oh no, she did know. She did know. She forgot his name. Okay. Let's see what's going on. What can I go to? <clears throat> Menu board. Sign holder. I can ring the bell. I can examine the note. You wrote this note, right? I think so, but I don't remember. 10 o'clock? That means it's already time for your meeting with whoever it is. Now that I think about it, whoever you were supposed to meet might already be here. You're the detective. Shouldn't you have checked that when you got here? Oh yeah, sorry. The chicken at this restaurant is really good, so, you know. <laughs> She's not a very good detective, is she? Uh, no, I, I don't know. Maybe we should take a look around the rest of the restaurant. It's no use. I can't read what it says. Let's see. Oh, hey! Now I remember what that sign says. If you would like some water, please ring the bell three times. Three times? Yeah, the waitress doesn't bring any water if you only ring the bell once. She said, those are the rules, apparently. I said, apparently? What do you mean, apparently? Don't you work here? I love her. Quite a stickler for the details, this detective. All right. Oh, did you see her? You want more water? Huh? Oh, sorry, I didn't ring the bell. And what's with the more water bit? Oh, well, come on. This is your third glass. Oh, okay, I get it. This was a little dig, wasn't it? Kind of like, hey, where's my food, right? No, not at all. Besides, I didn't ring it. But I would like to see you bringing my chicken soon. Duly noted. In the meantime, enjoy a nice glass of water. That is an absurd costume that she has to wear. Yes, I know time is passing. I'm just investigating now. This the one of the the woman here looks like a Sailor Moon villain. <coughs> Trunk, huh? Here you go. This is one big trunk. It seems pretty heavy, too. It's very suspicious and red. Hey, let's see what's in it. Sorry, but that's not possible. It's locked. Darn, I wanted to see what's inside. I can't do anything else here, can I? So what do you think, my dear beauty? Do you really think we can trust this deal? Who knows? It's not our job to think about that. But those incidents did happen in this country, just as he predicted. Yes, and they were pretty amusing too, weren't they? That fellow who sang out national secrets during a live TV broadcast. And the man who laid siege to the Metro Police Department taking the top dog hostage. 
But what if he double crosses us? It wouldn't be pretty. So Sissel predicted those things were gonna happen. No, no, he needs this deal too. And we've accepted all his conditions as well. Yes, and thanks to that, we have to be here on this extra little assignment. But as long as I'm paired up with you, Beauty, I don't mind. How do these two, how do they know about the cases at the special prison? Special prison? The guy who sang National Secrets, the man who held siege to Metro Police. Those cases are classified information. Hmm, I've heard about both of those cases, and recently too. The perpetrators in this, those cases are being, oh, the perpetrators in those cases are being held at a special facility. That's what the special prison is, but it's not known about by the general public. Oh my God, this man's blue hair is really incredible. He's like, I can't be a blue man, but I can have blue hair. It's the next best thing. There's so much blue up here. So prisoner D99, Detective Jowd, is one of these special cases too, huh? Dot, dot, dot. These two are talking about the very same cases I heard about just tonight. That couldn't be just coincidence, could it? Updated the phone book. Exclamation point. She's got a riding crop thing. Or the Hmm. What is it, beauty? Why don't we move to a different spot? That table in the back looks good. Now you're talking, beauty, my dear. Just what I've been waiting for. A quiet, secluded spot. Just the two of us. I wouldn't object to that. All of a sudden, I get this feeling somebody is eavesdropping. My sixth sense is very strong, you know. They're looking around. That's all right, my dear. You don't have to make excuses. Off we go across the bridge of poultry to the land of love. <laughs> the way he walks with it on his head and she has this like dominatrix posture. <laughs> what just happened? Did she sense we were here? Yeah, it does seem like it. It seems like they might be aliens with some sort of psychic powers what with her sixth sense haha <laughs> but you know I have some pretty amazing powers myself yeah like what like like if there's chicken nearby I could tell right away that's called a sense of smell but anyway at least the situation has changed a little bit now fate changed okay I don't believe in a sixth sense. It's not scientific, says the ghost. But come to think of it, we've been left behind, haven't we? It looks that way. Not having legs is even more convenient than I thought it would be. But what are we going to do now? They're all the way over there. I'm telling you, we'd better shake a leg if we're going to miss what they're saying. It'd be pretty hard to shake a leg not having legs and all. I want to hear what they're saying. They're still talking about something. I want to hear! Me too. Glass. Bottle dispenser. Dispense. Bell ring. I think I did that wrong. Well, we'll see. Uh, so I was wondering, we're not stuck over here by any chance, are we? Uh, we just might be. Okay, well, I have two thoughts. Number one, if we wanna get over to where those two are, we have to use this red trunk they forgot somehow. Sounds about right. What's your other thought? It doesn't look like this blue-haired bartender is going to be much help. So I guess we have to find somebody who can help then. Okay. You rang? Oh, I get it. You saw that couple over there and you started to get lonely, right? And so you decided to call me. Oh, that's so sweet. Forgive me, but I didn't ring for anybody. What? 
Now, could you not stand in my light, please? I can't see my glass properly. I've been working here for two days and I've been waiting this whole time for you to notice me. <laughs> yes, yeah. Now, would you stop trying to shake me up and just stick to shaking cocktails? Wait. She has a surprisingly short career with this place. Okay, well... broke that glass just like you did my heart a broken glass can never be put back the way it was just leave it there you can't just leave it somebody might get hurt doesn't this trunk belong to that couple over there the only things we allow customers to lose here are their cares miss please go and let them know about the trunk if you would be so kind how gallant of you. I just might fall for you, you know. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. I want odd girl. I agree. Me too. A <coughs> uh, shoot. He's going to put a glass here. I need you to put the glass down so I can get back. Thank you. No. I need it to be... There we go. We're gonna take a moment. Okay. Let's see. The security camera at the junkyard caught the moment of Lynn shooting me on tape. The security camera at the, at the scene caught her crime on tape. Anybody or anything else? Ah, yes. The cook. The man who called for help from the restaurant. The chicken kitchen. Cute chicken carrier. A woman who serves food at the food and water with a smile at the restaurant. The chicken kitchen. Apparently, this is only her second day working here, but she's already looking for romance. Black-hearted blue man. One half of the couple at the restaurant, the chicken kitchen. He and his accomplice seem to be waiting there for the other part in their deal. The other party in their deal. Black-hearted blue woman. One half of the couple at the restaurant, the chicken kitchen. She and her tiny accomplice are apparently waiting there for the other party in their deal. It seems her name is Beauty. Fastidious glass polisher. A composed bartender at the restaurant, the chicken kitchen, who continuously polishes glasses. It seems he doesn't notice anything besides the glass in his hand. Or does he? I mean, I guess it does kind of look like a martini glass. I thought I was thinking guile, but you know, that's fine. Well, goodbye. I've been working here for two days and I've had my eye on you the whole time. I think this might be my last night working here though. It's been fun. I guess she's leaving this place with her surprisingly short career intact. Okay, this guy's gonna come over and do this. Of all the things to forget, it wouldn't have been pretty if I forgot this. <laughs> Man, he's not good at this, is he? <coughs> Here we are, finally! I feel kind of bad about eavesdropping though. Not me! <laughs> Nor me. We gotta be really nosy. You gotta be nosy. I mean, we just delivered their lost trunk to them, after all. They owe us at least that much. What kind of detective says something like that? It's a good question. Oh, fate changed. Yay, checkpoint. This is one big trunk. It seems pretty heavy, too. It's very suspicious and red. Oh, wait, never mind. We already had this. I 
can't believe I forgot the trunk of all things. It's such a small body. You probably only have a small brain to match. Ouch, that hurts, beauty. But that's okay. That's what I love about you. That's what he loves about her? I don't get it either. Now, where were we? Oh, right. Who to invite to the wedding? If we got married, that is, of course. We can talk about that when we're alone. Hmm? But aren't we alone now, beauty? Huh? Do you think she senses our presence again? I spy a ladybug. A ladybug? I just hate little bugs. After all that trouble, it happened anyway? It looks that way, yes. It's not over yet, though. It's not? What are you talking about? Well, the thing can still land on her or not land on her. We're going to work on that. You're not dead yet. N no, but I'm going to be in just a few seconds. But before that happens, maybe there's something we can do from here. Trick time. maybe save him too and by saving him we'll save her that would make sense okay because we made it to the driver hello looks like he's unconscious excuse me could you wake up for a second please pushy as ever this detective one thing i've learned is that the newly dead stay unconscious for a little while at first huh i was like that and you were like that too oh yeah i guess you're right Anyway, if we restart the flow of time now, you'll die. Yeah, I know. Why don't we try going back even further in time? What? Even further? But how? Simple. We go back four minutes before the death of this poor driver here. You can do that? I never tried it before, so I don't know how it'll go. But if we can erase the driver's death, that should erase your death too. Oh, wow. I can't think of any other way. Let's try it. Alright, 9.59, four minutes before death. What the? That's Lynn, our rookie detective. What's she doing at Point X? Could be, could it be just a coincidence? And we just got an APB on her just a little while ago. Something about an extremely important case, this extremely important witness, currently extremely on the run. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, witness. Now what? Should I report this to Inspector Cabanella? <clears throat> they told us to stay off the radio unless it was an emergency, but I think I'd better call this in. Poor Lynn. I wonder what she did this time. Inspector Cabanella is pretty protective when it comes to Lynn. He'd want to know. What's the matter? All right, fine. Wonder who that was? This is point X. Idiot. The, the conversation we saw. Yes, sir. I'll go get her. Okay, so they don't want to show us the whole conversation. They're like, you know this conversation. <coughs> are you wearing headphones? Oh, it's because the sirens are so loud. Static is awful. I can't believe I forgot the trunk of all things. <gasps> oh, I thought the bug was us! They couldn't sense us! They sensed
cops had them bugged. The cops were eavesdropping. They couldn't have to protect the ghosts. That's interesting. With such a small body, you probably only have a small brain to match. Ouch, that hurts, beauty, but that's okay. That's what I love about you. <clears throat> what the heck is this? I spy a ladybug. A ladybug? I just hate little bugs. I can't hear very well. No, no, no. Look up, look up, look up. Oh! Oh! Oh, he loses control because... The sound. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow, the van driver was a detective. Looks like it. I noticed something, though. That conversation he was listening to just before the crash. I remember hearing it before. You're right. We just heard it a few minutes ago, didn't we? Just after that conversation, the detective suddenly passed out. What happened, I wonder? We already know the answer. We saw what happened at the restaurant. I love the lighting, the very dramatic lighting. Everything pauses and we have to shine a spotlight. She burned up the ladybug. Sometimes when a high-tech bug like that is destroyed, it emits a loud signal. Loud enough to knock a person out if they were listening to it through headphones. So that's why the detective passed out, huh? Bingo! Now let's stop it from happening. Oh boy. Is it his fate? Is it him? Okay, it's him. Hey, this place. This is the place that White Suited Inspector phoned tonight. This is the parking lot of the park on the east side of town. It's been years. You know this park? Yeah, I used to play here a lot when I was little. But then one day, I swore I'd never set foot in this park ever again. Okay, so is this where her dad shot her mom? Was this the scene of the crime? Whoa, those are some really deep, dark feelings there. I wonder what happened. Hold it! Don't give me that ghost doesn't have a foot to set bit. She's like, I'm gonna relieve the tension with silliness. It's just a figure of speech. What kind of nitpicker do you think I am? Anyway, whatever. Let's just get started. Okay, let's do that. I won't press her about that other thing right now. But later... Flashing light. Can we climb the seat? Let's see what happens if we turn this on. Doesn't look like the detective is going to come. Might as well turn it off. It's pretty loud. What the? Seem to be much else I can do here, so <clears throat> I guess we'll wait for him to come by. I know time is passing, yes, I'm aware. Binoculars, I don't know what I'm going to do with those, but. Time is passing. I don't know what else I can do. Okay. <clears throat> I'm just not sure what else I can do besides be in these binoculars. Like, I can't reach his radio thing. Who is the detective talking to? Don't keep yelling at me about these things. But they might be talking about something ridiculously important. That's true, but still. It might be the person who really shot you. Now you're just throwing things out there. But in any case, it looks like it's too late to get to the phone now. Darn, I think we missed our chance. Okay, shall we... Start from the beginning? Let's start from the beginning. Okay. Okay. 
Oh, I see what I'm gonna do. Okay, hold on. I think I get it. See, when I drop this, it launches. So I think he's gonna put his binoculars and I'm gonna launch his binoculars. And then I'm going to go here once I can to get him to, yeah, I'm going to get him to hopefully carry the binoculars. Come on. What are these doing here? All right. Problem solved. I did it. the matter I'm in the telephone detective Ringe. this is memory her name is memory they've got names what's the matter it's not time for your regular report oh she's spying on the blue people so she must have been the one who put the bug on it I wonder how the bug got there I should have thought about it she got the job shortly before this so that she can... Like, she must be a detective too. <laughs> and she's working undercover. <coughs> Listen to this. There's a suspicious couple in the bar upstairs. I'm gonna put a ladybug on them. A ladybug? You mean a listening device? Don't do anything to blow our cover. Inspector Cabanilla will be furious. But they're doing all kinds of suspicious whispering. We have to find out what they're saying. You can pick up the signal from your van. Check out their conversation for me, would you? All right, fine. Once you get going on something, I know there's no stopping you. Thanks, later then. Hold on. Did you see a customer come in just now? A young woman with red hair and red boots? Oh yeah, that restless, suspicious chick. Sure. Suspicious? I mean, come on, as soon as she sat down, she ordered three glasses of water in a row. And she spilled the second glass on the table. <laughs> She's very coordinated. Okay, fine. Keep your eye on her too, if you would. You got it. Oh, wow. That waitress was... Oh, wow. That waitress was an undercover agent. And she apparently thought you were pretty suspicious too. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I was really thirsty, so, you know. <laughs> uh, no, I don't know. Anyway, did you hear what I heard about the listening device? We have to do something about that bug. So should we stay here or follow up on the waitress? Looks like it's time to make a decision. I'm gonna go there. I think it's the right choice. Let's see how this goes. I know we're going over tonight. Sorry, folks. I didn't realize this one was gonna have layers upon layers. Hey, look where we are! The heart of the chick of the chicken kitchen, eh? Yup, or as most people say, the kitchen. <laughs> I hope the key to preventing that accident is here somewhere. Oh, I bet it will be. You know what they say. Where there's smoke and chicken, there's fire. I don't think there's usually chicken in that line, but okay. Hmm, now that you mention it, it is pretty smoky in here. <clears throat> What's wrong? I can't seem to raise the switch. It won't budge. Yeah, well, not surprising considering this whole place is sticky with grease. I bet it must be stuck. Yeah, it does feel pretty sticky. But if the switch were already raised, I bet I could manage to lower it. It's good to know. Oh my god, we're inchworming around. Pot. Kettle. Hey, look at what she's doing. Do you think that could be... Yeah, she's probably planting the ladybug. Now that I think about it. It's this waitress's meddling that starts the whole change of, chain of events. The detective wouldn't have gotten his ears blown out and wouldn't have crashed. In other words, we're witnessing it with our own eyes. The cause of a huge disaster slowly being planted in a chicken. 
Hey, I just had a good idea about what to do about the ladybug. No, I was thinking we could let her get crushed under the chicken instead of me. <laughs> I can't tell if you're kidding. At any rate, we're just going to keep going right past that. Now we've seen the root cause of the accident. And all we have to do now is think of a way to take care of it. Set things on fire. Property damage. It's smoky in here. Really not sure what else I can do here. The chef is setting things on fire. I know time is passing. Oh, shoot. Okay, so he does have that bottle of wine. There's gotta be something that I can do with his hat to get on the floor. Okay, I see. Okay, we'll see what this does. I've lost a lot of time here, but I'm figuring it out. <clears throat> okay, pedal. Hey, what's up with this lazy Susan? It's acting up today. Maybe it's out of sorts because I was spinning around on it yesterday. Interesting thing to do for a lady her age. Maybe it's out of sorts. How about thinking maybe it might be broken? But it really isn't broken. It's just us ghosts. <laughs> what are you doing? Can't you tell? I thought I'd give it a little spin. Oh, I get it. You're going to make her take the one that doesn't have the ladybug on it. Right. And then that suspicious woman won't burn it up. Good thinking. But wait a minute. I don't know if that'll work. Huh? After all, even a girl like her is still bound to notice. I mean, platter's suddenly spinning around right before her eyes? Yeah, that's the rub. If only we could distract her for a minute. Yeah, I know we got it. It's smoky in here, so she's gonna go look over there. There we go. <coughs> okay, I don't know where I need to be. I ran out of time. I think we're about to die. There, all set. I think she's taking the wrong one. I think, there, how about that? The ladybug is still sitting on the table. We did it. La la chicken, thou art so beautiful chicken. I took a bite, my heart swelled with pride, and I got goosebumps. What the heck is this? I'm consumed with the love of consuming you, la la la. Amazing. <clears throat> Fate averted. Well, looks like you've escaped the fate of being hammered by your horrible hen. Some good alliteration. <clears throat> I guess that was, was that a first attempt? There was one thing that I did wrong, um, missing the phone call. 
with a guy in the park. Um, so I had to reset there. <coughs> but apparently they do build in enough wiggle room time. It actually helps that I had noticed the thing with the chef's hat and the bottle that he kept under it because that, like I have a hard time sometimes processing things as they're moving fast, but my brain was better able to grab hold of what was happening there because I was like, oh, I was right about the bottle under his hat. And then I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, his hat fell back. I could use that. Maybe I should talk through my, my thought process better, but um, I guess Rube Goldberg machines make sense to me. <clears throat> yes, but I still haven't escaped the worst darkness of this terrible night. I, I shot you, didn't I? There must have been some sort of complicated set of circumstances that made you do it. It's never okay to shoot a person, no matter what the circumstances. Hey, shouldn't that be my line? But anyway, you were investigating a case, and I was supposed to give you information on that case. Maybe it's time you told me about it. Tell me about the case you're looking into. Yes, I guess I should. But let's go back to the new present first. Okay, sure. Chapter and... The day is saved. Back in the new present, the delicious aroma of chicken fills the air. But I'm still thinking about Lynn. I wonder if she's still waiting for her chicken to be served. I decided to go see her. See her and ask her the questions that were still consuming me. All right. There we go. This isn't a new chapter, so I don't think there'll be new story in the other areas. Oh, I should save! Shoot, you're right. The disastrous accident has been completely erased. Once again, I've saved the red-headed detective from death. Saved Lynn, the criminal who stole my life. One question in particular hangs heavy on my mind. Why did she shoot me? Until I know the answer, I'll never be satisfied. <coughs> Oh, she's talking to this guy! Meanwhile, Lynn's appetite is apparently foremost in her mind. A golden brown chicken sits on the table in front of her. Until she eats the whole thing, she'll probably never be satisfied. All right. I should actually save. This is a great song. All right, well, I probably should have saved in the kitchen so that we could start off next time with that, like, lovely little bit of narration, but that's fine. This game is very fun. It's very charming. It's extremely charming. Charming is very much the word I would use for it. Thank you for being patient with me as I went over a bit. I'm having fun with this. This game is nice. It's interesting. And it is interesting that it keeps such a pace going. Um, a lot of talking <clears throat> but uh i didn't totally lose my voice and i will try to do vocal warm-ups to do better next time yeah so i guess i'm playing disco elysium on thursday i've been having some issues with it that i'll probably talk about at the start of that stream but i'm gonna give it another go so if you're watching that stream i will give it another try um otherwise yeah i'll, I'll talk to you about it later maybe chrono um but uh but i've been thinking about it and at the very least, um, that we will continue doing Ghost Trick every Tuesday. Um, and I have some other things I'm working on that I'll hopefully be able to share with all of you soon. Um, <clears throat> oh, good. Well, thank you, McPickle Breath. Um, the characters, they have, they have enough depth to be endearing and to give me a little bit of meat to try to figure out um, without necessarily letting me, like, lose my place, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, it's a thing I'm, I'm still kind of thinking through, um, but I'll, I'll be probably talking about it on Discord. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and shut down because it's getting late and I've got some freelance work to do and also time to give my cat some attention. But you take care of yourselves and have a lovely evening. Um, if you haven't yet joined the Discord, if you haven't yet followed me on social media, please feel free to do all of those things. I will see you later. Take care of yourselves. 
and have a good night. Bye.